another DJ Virtu Bear Review. Stage right, we have an entire scrum of previously consumed Dogfish Head Craft Brewery beers out of Milton, Delaware, U.S. of A. Yay, yay, so you know what time it is. It's time for DJ to go loco. That's right, guys, we're going local yet again with another Dogfish Head beer. And what beer do we have from said brewery today? We have Romantic Chemistry. Now, Romantic Chemistry is a new beer. It's an IPA. It's a seasonal brew. It sort of kind of replaced April Hop. Why do I say that? Because it's based off of that beer. It clocks in at 7.2% ABV and 40 IBUs. And like April Hop, it has apricots in it, but this time it has also mango and ginger. So it's supposed to be sort of like the next evolution of it. And you know what? Dogfish Head's all about that. They've been making fruit flavored beers and things of that sort since day one, their inception. I remember them in the late 90s having all kinds of crazy stuff that like blew my mind and said, damn, how can you put that in beer? And yeah, anyway, so. Enough flapping my gums. We've got our lovely Cigar City glass to go with my shirt here that Johnny the Stunt Drinker gave me. And you know what? Apropos, because I believe they have a dogfish head glass just like this. Of course they do. Anyways, time to pop the top. Boom. Gigantic hiss on the top. Obsessively collectible sort of copper color crown. Mmm. Damn, I can smell the hops and the freaking mango blasted off this. Hell yes. This beer is uber fresh. It just came out about a week and a half ago. I'm not sure what the the date of bottling is but i looked here and i did the math by their freshness date system and it looks to be like this beer is about a week and a half old at time of recording you gotta freaking like that so let's see what the appearance is damn that's a gorgeous gorgeous amber orange color damn that looks like a fall sunset in a glass with a two finger head of super super tightly packed bubbles now there's is IPA glass of course so it's nucleated or laser etched in the bottom which means it agitates the carbonation which creates continuous aroma in the glass but man that's a gorgeous beer in the glass when you swirl that puck man it's super thick yeah tons of alcohol legs on the inside of this glass wow a lot of alcohol legs and we're gonna get some nice glass legs and I can tell take a look at that guys that beer is freaking gorgeous let's see what's up with the aroma Wow, tons and tons of fruit on this, man. Straight up, I get the actually the apricot first. After that, the mango. Both of those fruits, if you smell the flesh of, say, like a dried apricot or a fresh one and a mango, there are similar cast aromas off of them, sort of like that peach family sort of spectrum of aromas, but they only all both have their own unique twist and tartness and twang to them, sort of. Also, after that, there's a good hit of that ginger in the background. And a big hit of dankness as well to like follow it up. Really resounding dankness. And this beer opens more in this IPA glass. That dankness is building nicely. There's not a hint of alcohol in there. Damn, this beer smells delicious. I'm ready to dive in. I've earned this shit today. I earn it every day. Well, maybe not every day, but today I did anyway. So, dive in. Cheers. Mmm. Wow, epic glass slicing like I thought. Mm. That beer is up in your grill. It's way hoppier tasting than it smells. The smell is all of that fruit and that ginger and stuff going on in there. But man, you get a big kick up in your grill of dank, piney, resinous hops. After that, that apricot and the mango come in later. And the ginger's a really, really slight kick in the back. As I'm sitting here talking, that's building a little bit, but... What's really building on my palate is dankness. Mmm, tasty. This is an improvement over April Hop. April Hop wasn't my fav favorite beer. It was quite tame. You can see I'm crushing this bad boy down. This is really, really drinkable. For 7.2%, all that alcohol is hidden. And you could crush this beer easily. Mmm. I'm, I'm digging this. It's well made. It's not a juicy IPA of any you know stretch of the imagination. Like, the bitterness is also, almost also when I'm tasting it. Like, when you, you eat a couple few apricots in a row, some dried ones, that's sort of like, um, I don't know, almost like carroty sort of taste that you get off of that because of the high beta carotene content that's in mangoes and also the apricots. I'm getting that, like, sort of beta carotene, like, almost taste buildup, if that makes sense. Excuse me, but, man, it's got a really good dangness and... They, they're 
aimed seemed to be with this beer from what I was reading and their description of it to have the fruits complement the hops profile, and I think they totally have. Mmm. Really, I could I could crush the rest of that beer right now without a problem. So let's grade this beer. Mmm. As you drink it more, the mango comes out more in the taste. Anywho, I'm digressing. <laughs> That's what I do. So Rape Beer, what do they grade this? They give it an 89. Bam! High B plus, almost A minus. Beer Icon gives it an 85. High B. Untapped gives this a 3.82 caps, which is kind of in that high B plus, verging on A minus sort of range as well. I'm going to go, hmm, what do we grade this beer? I think we're going to give this beer a 94. High A minus, 93, 94, somewhere in that range. It's really tasty. This beer is not for everybody, though, because if you don't like mango and apricot and the, the sort of twangier side of their flavor spectrum and that, like, sort of carroty, sort of beta carotene taste I'm talking about, like when you eat a few like that and, uh, and you taste that dried apricot skin on the fruit, that's what I'm trying to describe, I think. This may not be for you. Also, if you don't like dig that like dankness tone in the beer, that won't be for you. But I think it's a really well done beer. I would drink this again for sure. And if you want to try a unique beer, off-center beer for off-center people, that's what they say at Dogfish Head, right? Th this is is really true. And I'm not saying that because yeah, I'm a Dogfish Head fanboy. Fuck it. I've been drinking Dogfish Head probably the longest, one of the longest craft beers I've been drinking the entire time just because of my beach house proximity to their, you know, Rehoboth Brewery that's now their pilot brewery. Anyway, I'm waffling on here, guys. You expect that because that's what I do, too, besides digressing. But we also have to talk about something really important right now, too, which is thinking globally, drinking locally. That's right. I'm drinking local today from Dogfish Head Craft Brewery. Are you drinking a, a brewery local to you? I freaking hope so because that supports this craft beer movement, helps it keep growing, and that revolution moving forward, even though the big boys snatch up a brewery here and there. Fuck them. There's 10 more breweries open up the next day. You know, we can leave those poor snatched up souls to the wayside. So, to the next EJ's BrewTube, thanks for me and each and every one of you for watching. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and smash that like button, because that, along with copious amounts of romantic chemistry from Dogfish Head Craft Brewery, put my happy face on. So, till then, I got nothing but a big-ass bunch of love for y'all, and you know what's coming, that's right, a big t-shirt!